So I will go ahead and start recording, get us started. And if there are any questions, please just feel free to throw them in the chat. So as I mentioned, um, we will just be kind of sticking to this agenda. And I apologize, um, it appears that what ended up happening, I was editing my deck and it, it didn't remove all of the questions um, that I had listed in here. But I did want to kind of run through a lot of these questions because I know I've, I've still been getting some from you all. So this first one, I submitted a 4UR and then a Shroy O2, but the system will not allow me to submit a Shroy UR. What should I do? This is something that was actually resolved in our EDI release. If you're still seeing this issue, it's possible um, that it would still be occurring if you're trying to submit from a draft that you saved prior to our release. Um, so in that instance, you would just want to go ahead and uh, restart, file a, a brand new sure you are that's not saved from draft. Next question is another one I've seen uh, intermittently. So I submitted a filing and the employee is now showing as my name. How do I fix this? That is typically going to be due to a Google Chrome autofill. Um, so what I would recommend is to either shut off your autofill settings, because typically what that will do is that'll save your name, your address, your phone number, and it's possible that that can populate. Um, we don't have any control over that, unfortunately, but um, it's something that can be easily resolved if you just double check all the information before submitting, or if you just go ahead and you disable those Google Chrome settings. I am getting a transaction party error. How do I fix this? This was most recently related to missing employer addresses on legacy claims. So just make sure that you're including employer address information. If you see that error, that's usually the first place to check. When I try to submit a story transaction, nothing happens. What should I do? This is frequently going to be tied to an occupation description that is too long for the field. So what tends to happen is if you submit a Troy or a Troy you are with that information, it will um, just automatically submit. Um, there's not a check on that in a UR because it wouldn't be a required field, but if it's submitted, um, and it's longer than 50 characters, it may cause um, future files to reject. In that instance, what we would recommend doing is just going ahead and doing a FOI O2 to update that occupation description and just make sure that it's under 50 characters. Once you've done that, you should be able to submit your Shroy. But if you have any um, other issues, a few other places that you may want to check are benefits. So just make sure that if it's a, a transaction that requires benefits, that you have those benefit segments or payment segments. Um, that's frequently what we see is that people have either forgotten those segments um, and then they're running into issues or uh, the occupation description was just a little too long on that Freud transaction. I'm going to go ahead and skip over the next couple for now and I will show, uh, demonstrate those in the system. And another one that we hear a lot, uh, my transaction said it was submitted, do I need to wait for DLI to approve it before completing the next transaction? One of the perks of being a e-form filer is that you do not need to wait for us to approve that submission. Um, now, the only time that, that you, you might see an issue or something that requires approval from an e-form standpoint is if you need to submit an SU. That's going to be pretty rare in the e-form world, but if that's something that you ever need to do, which is it's called a, an SU or a sync up transaction um, to get yourself back in sync, you can always just reach out to the EDI team and we can flag that file for you. So for the last two questions and then the two middle questions, benefit segment and payment segment, I'm going to go ahead and just get into the test system. I can demonstrate. few of those steps. All right, so right now I'm logged in as a trading partner. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go into a claim that I already have. And I've already done my first reported injury. So I'm gonna actually answer those questions in reverse. 
So if you need to find the documents that are generated off your transactions, you're gonna to wanna to click into the claim and scroll to the very bottom of the page. Now you can click on the documents tab. That's gonna show you submitted documents on the file. So you can see that this one and this one were EDI or eForm created. And then if you click the reporting history, it's going to give you just an overview of what has been submitted. So on this one, we can see that a 00 and an EP have both been submitted. So now regarding populating that benefit segment, and I apologize, I clicked the wrong button there. I am going to go ahead and choose a payment report. So this is usually what's going to replace your, your notice of benefit payment. This is what you would use if you were needing to file a settlement or just any kind of lump sum payment for an employee. This will just pull all the information from my most recent submission. And the, the biggest questions that we usually get are about these benefit and payment segments. So with this one, you'll see that since I already um, I submitted my EP or my employer paid transaction, I have this temporary total employer paid that's already here. Now, let's say that I need to submit this EP. I had a couple more weeks of benefits. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna update my weeks and days if necessary, and then my through date if necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just make that the 28th. And then I'm also just going to update my benefit type amount paid. Now in this instance, if I'm doing a, a PY, that usually means that I have a settlement. So I'm gonna add another benefit code here. And in this instance, I'm actually gonna go ahead and choose an unspecified lump sum settlement. This is usually what you're going to use if you um, are just paying a settlement out to an employee. So now that I'm paying this unspecified lump sum settlement, I can actually go ahead and just skip right down to the benefit period start date. And all of this information is available in our EDI documentation. I'm just gonna go ahead and do 1121, through 1221 for my from and through dates. And this is a common display error, error that we see. You can go ahead and just ignore that as long as um, you type something in there, you should, you should be all good. And I'm just gonna put 20,000. Benefit payment issue date of 2121. Now, if I had other benefit types that I needed to add here, I could just add as many as necessary. Something important to note is that you would only add one of each benefit type code. So I would never add another temporary total employer paid, never an unspecified lump sum settlement payment once I've got these already in here. Now for a PY, you would also need to do a payment segment. So I'll go ahead and I'll click add. Now I, I can skip the employer paid because I that's not part of um, my settlement. So I can just do unspecified lump sum settlement, type the payee and the payment amount, the from and through date, and the issue date. Now let's say that I had, um, let's say part of this actually was gonna go to an attorney. I can just add another payment segment. So I'm gonna edit this one so that it says 15,000. I'm gonna go ahead and do another one for the attorney for 5,000. And that is how you'd want to complete um, those payment segments and those benefit segments, if you had questions with that. I see here that there is a 
question on the primary liability. Um, so with that one, Lisa, what you would do is you can type as, as much as you um, can into that space if you'd like, that's available on the form. And then if you needed to add additional information, you can actually just upload it as an other filing. So you can type it into a PDF, and then you can just come into the claim and click Submit Filing. From your filing name, you'll go ahead and you'll select Other Filing. And then you'll click to upload your document. You'll select uh, the document that goes along with that denial. And then for your type, you'll actually go ahead and choose supporting documentation to primary liability determination. And then you can just put denial support or whatever you want to call it in the description. Do you have any other supporting attachments like medical records or anything like that? You can upload those here as well. And then just sign and attest and submit. And then as far as the denial reasons, I think that that question may have also um, been wondering about the denial reason code. Um, you should be able to add whatever ones are, are um, applicable in that instance. Um, so if, if for some reason you, you're running out of space with those codes, please let us know because you should be able to add multiple. And now you can see here, this is just my test document that I uploaded for that denial. I wanted to go back to the claim. I could take a look down here at the documents and we'll also see that right here. So a few other things that I just wanted to run through on this call. Um, we do still have our Campus Central page. That is where we put all of our communications and also where we post our release notes. Um, we will have another release that goes out tomorrow. Uh, that's there typically Thursday night. So um, that one should be up Friday afternoon, usually those release notes. Additionally, we did have our EDI release, as I mentioned, and that would impact um, some of you all as eForm filers. So I will go ahead and pull that up as well. It's right on our Campus Central page. If I click here whoop, to our EDA release information, this is sent out. Most of you have probably already seen this, but this just recaps all of the information that we resolved with that EDI release. So if you run into any other questions or any issues, you can certainly just reach out to our EDI team. I'll go ahead and put that email in the chat. And just on behalf of that group, I just appreciate your patience. We do have a lot of emails that we're working through right now. That group is working through a lot of emails. Um, so just be patient. They'll respond to you as soon as they can. Um, but they do have a, a large volume that they're kind of working with right now. And with that, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, one thing that we are trying to kind of um, gauge in these calls is whether or not it's something that we think we need to continue. I know with this one, um, we are planning to space them out to once a month. Um, so if any feedback that anybody has in the chat related to the frequency and duration of these, or if it's something that we think we can maybe just roll into our um, insurer answer hours that we typically have, that would be very helpful just so we can figure out the scheduling of these going forward. And I'm not seeing anything in the chat right now. 
So I think what we'll do here is we will go ahead and end a little bit early today. We will go ahead and get the recording up on the website. Thank you all so much for attending. Have a good rest of your day.